A quick Google search for how to gain muscle will bring up literally hundreds of thousands of resources, all catered directly towards guys who are brand new to the gym or looking to build their first five to 10 pounds of muscle mass. The common thread being basic compound movements, full body or upper lower training splits and basic strength progression. Now, these tips are all fine as beginners need very little training and very simple programming to get even decent results. The problem is many of these guys get those initial results following those methods and then think they found the holy grail. These are the guys who say things like the best exercise for big arms is chin ups. Any more than three full body sessions per week, that's overtraining. Naturals can't recover from that type of training. Arm days, or any body part specific days for that matter, are a waste of time. And yet, many of these guys have never progressed after their initial newbie gains wore off after one to two years of training. But the guys who are looking to get to elite levels, the ones who continue to progress year after year, some of whom are 20 plus years into training and still grinding away, trying to gain just one to two more pounds of muscle tissue. Those are the ones using training methods that you'll almost never find spoken about online. The methods that everyone on the internet will say doesn't work, are overtraining, or just overly complicated for no reason. Now, the reason most people make these claims is that they don't understand one very basic fact about bodybuilding, and that is the game changes when you become advanced. And I'm not talking about natural versus enhanced. I'm talking about anyone who has put 10 to 20 or even up to 30 pounds of muscle tissue on their physique since they started bodybuilding, at which point the methods that got you there are no longer going to produce the same results, especially not at any measurable rate of time after your initial growth spurt from newbie gains. To grow the next five, three, or even just one to two pounds of muscle tissue, the approach is going to look extremely different from what you did to build your base. And this is where you see guys getting results by performing crazy high volumes, frequencies, or even using tons of intensity techniques, maybe even a combination of all three. But because advanced training is not something that can be put together in a simple template like beginner training, it's important to understand and really take in this next statement I'm about to make. Advanced training is about throwing out all of the rules and focusing on what needs to be done for progress to continue for you. And generally, what someone needs to progress after training 10, 15, or even 20 years and 20 to 30 pounds of muscle heavier is going to look drastically different than what they did in year one. And because the road to becoming advanced is so different for everyone, and there's no template like beginner training, I'm going to leave you with some principles that you can take away and apply to your training now that will hopefully help you discover how to continue building muscle well into the advanced stages of bodybuilding. First, training volume is completely unique to the individual. There are no rules when it comes to total amount of work sets done. Remember, this is advice for advanced bodybuilding, and there are pro bodybuilders with elite level physiques, both natural and enhanced, who train on complete opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of training volume, ranging from as little as five to six sets per week for a single muscle group up to 30 plus sets per week. And no, it's not that the enhanced guys are training with more and that naturals are training with less. There are plenty of enhanced bodybuilders training with less volume than natural bodybuilders. And that's a perfect example of how individual volume is. And these guys are all at the elite level. And the reason they're training with such drastically different training volumes, yet are all getting similar results, is that they have dialed in the ideal training volume for their individual genetics, lifestyle factors, and any other variable that might influence their progress. And they're not following a general rule of thumb because that's what the majority agree is best. They're following the feedback that their body gives them. The second principle, is intensity should be relative to your training volume. Many beginner or intermediate training templates assume a fixed intensity. Usually that means either every set is taken to failure or nowhere near training to failure. And when programming this intensity, there's a total disregard for the amount of work done. This naturally leads people down the path of picking one training method over another. And you get guys who swear by low volume, high intensity training and others who swear by volume. Guys who are training to get to the elite level don't worry about this argument as they understand that there's a very specific volume of training they need to reach to make any progress at this stage of the game and that the intensity of each set should be followed by the training volume, not the other way around like many people think. So if an advanced bodybuilder understands that he's super strong and even a remotely high number of sets on squats and deadlifts bury his personal recovery abilities, he's not gonna try to copy a super high volume trainer's routine. He's gonna keep his volume in check and make every one of those limited sets count. The same applies to someone on the other end of the volume needs spectrum. If genetically, 
He has super high recovery abilities, is very resistant to fatigue, and gets a very small training response from each individual set. He's going to have to do more total work in the gym, and that's fine. But he also understands that in order to get that total amount of work done, he's going to have to adjust his intensity to match that high volume. And as a result, he has to keep his ego in check, train shy of failure, and maximize each set while minimizing his fatigue. And finally, the last principle comes down to the work to rest ratio. Regardless which training method he follows to build his physique, one aspect of hard training that can never be avoided is fatigue, and it will always build up over time. In order to continue training productively, the proper amount of rest days per week, deload periods, and active rest or even layoffs should be taken. And again, this number is different for everyone, and it's based off the bodybuilder's own genetics, training style, and experience. And again, this is something that has to be fine-tuned. So next time you follow a bodybuilder who claims he takes zero rest days per week, or only trains three to four days per week, and is clearly advanced, don't take that as a framework that you should follow to get similar results. Understand that this is a result of years and sometimes decades of training that have led him up to this style of training currently. And if you're just getting started, the basics work. There's no need to complicate anything. And I encourage you to stick to a plan and milk it for all the results that you can get. But understand that as you progress as a bodybuilder, the more you will need to think outside of the box, listen to your body, and break some of the rules. So if you're not seeing progress with your current program, I encourage you to take these principles and experiment with all of them. Listen to your body and adjust as needed. And if you need a place to start, I highly recommend you check out my five day old school mass game program, as it was designed specifically to take you to the advanced levels in bodybuilding as quickly as possible using proven old school bodybuilding training methods. It's also a system that you can incorporate all of the principles mentioned in this video into that will result in further long-term progress. And as always, if you want to see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.